Hi everyone, it's Sam. Today I'm bringing you a very special plan with me video featuring a spring bulb medley. I'm going to focus on three specific pages of my March 2021 setup, sharing the drawing process and the painting process for most of these, so you can use this as a reference video whenever you need to. So let's get started. Now I know that the cover page does look elaborate and detailed, but it really did start with this blank page. First thing I did was start with the teacup. It took a couple of goes to get it right, but I persisted because I really need this to be the focus of the whole page. The story behind this spread is a little bit of a sad one, for me anyway. Um, my mother passed last July, and she is an avid gardener who found it incredibly annoying that I just seemed to sit around and paint and draw all the time. So I promised her that this spring we would garden together again like we used to. We came up with the idea of a giant polka dot covered teacup that we would plant spring bulbs in. So I chose to dedicate the whole of my March 2021 setup to this theme and to my mum. She had wanted dwarf daffodils and purple crocuses in her teacup and that's what I've drawn here today. Pinterest was a great source of inspiration. I found loads of photographs of these glass vases with large hyacinth bulbs in and these really attractive cone decorations. So I made a point of including it in my composition I love the idea of a touch of autumn being in there with the spring bulbs. Here I'm just drawing these thin winding branches that have the tiny little cones and buds on them. Now I want to add a nice pot, a terracotta pot of grape hyacinths in the background. I'm just adding a few details of the flower and then blocking out where I want the flower heads to go. I wanted to add my March calendar in amongst the spring bulbs and I had this idea of setting the calendar inside a willow branch wreath which is what you saw me use the compass to draw out a circle based on which I could place all my branches which are essentially wiggly lines and I wanted a little nest of eggs to finish off the wreath. The eggs are set in a nest of moss and I finish it off with some lettering for the word March. So now we're ready to start painting. When I go to paint a complicated picture with lots of elements in it, I like to define where the lights and darks go, also known as establishing the tonal values. So I've mixed up a blue-grey paint using burnt umber and blue French ultramarine and I'm using a watery mix of this paint to define all the elements, the teacups and the pots and the calendar and the nest of eggs. Like a monochrome underpainting, it just helps you know where you're going. I feel it looks great already. I just quickly want to show you a preview of what's coming up on next week's video. It's this beautiful painted magnolia tree, so I hope you can join me. Now back to our cover page and choosing the colours for the spring flowers. I've chosen a purple and a blue as my two tones for the crocus, and then a lemon yellow mixed with white and a bright yellow for my daffodils. I start to paint the crocuses with a watery wash of a mix of the purple and the blue. I like to combine the two colour tones for my first wash. As you can see they blend together beautifully. Now I'm using the blue grey mix with the purple to define the teacup and then add those polka dots. Now we add a mix of the lemon yellow to the daffodils and while it's still wet I drop green in so that they blend to create the stalks. As I did for my crocus 
When I mix my greens, I use two colour tones, a yellow green and a blue green. Sometimes I add white as well, just to get a bit of variety. So now I'm mixing darker and stronger versions of the colours to create more definition and deepen those tones around the flower bases. The darker purple is used to define all the petals and you really start to see the 3D flowers take shape. I use a brighter yellow to do the same for the daffodil flowers. And now we're adding a little bit of burnt sienna, a ready brown colour for the flower centres. I use the same colour for the centres of the primroses. So now we're painting the hyacinth bulbs that are sitting in the glass vase. I use a watery mix of browns and greens for my first base. And then I go in with a burnt umber, a darker tone, to define the shape of the hyacinth bulb. Sorry about my head popping into view every now and again. I didn't realise it until after. <laughs> I do apologise. So now we're going to suggest the glass rim of the container. I use the blue-grey for the shadows and then a white for the reflection on the glass. I use a more concentrated mix of the burnt sienna and the burnt umber to paint in my dried cone decoration. I was very much influenced by the sorts of displays that you get in florists. I know that my mum would have absolutely loved this. The thick paint does look beautiful in contrast to all those watery paint mixtures that you see on the page. Now we're going in with the same thick paint to define the cones and the hyacinth bulbs. As I mentioned, we use white to reflect the glass and represent it. And now it's time to do the primroses in pastel pinks. I use a dark magenta centre around the yellow. The watery grey green mix is used to paint all the negative spaces between the flowers and the leaves. For the grape hyacinths I use cobalt blue to suggest their shapes and add in little touches of purple nearer the base. So now we're mixing a dark blue-green mix so that I can start to add deeper, darker tones. This helps define all the elements that are in the teacup. And you may notice that we start off with very watery washes and then we go in with darker paint, more concentrated paint and layer and layer and layer until we get the look that we want. And I'm very impressed with the paper for this bullet journal. It coped very well with all my layering. So that was a watery wash of burnt sienna for the terracotta pot. And now we're on to tying everything together. That actually means putting in a background so that everything seems to blend seamlessly into one composition. I chose a beautiful light watery olive green and a forest green. Then use my large square brush to blend the paint across both pages. I also use the forest green deeper tone to intensify the background so that it doesn't look so washed out, especially around the bases of the flower pots. You can really see how that adds dimension to the whole picture and it really starts to look 3D. So after drying the whole thing very well, we're now onto painting the willow branch wreath. So I'm mixing up greeny brown and ready brown and doing basically watery wavy lines to represent the, the willow branches, adding some green around the eggs for the moss. And then I'll go in with more concentrated paint, this time the burnt sienna, which is a ready brown, and try to define the branches even more. So now I'm adding yellow to this brownie mix for the bird's eggs. I add a bit of extra colour to the calendar as well and make sure I dry everything thoroughly. As a little tribute to my mama, I 
drew in forget-me-nots. I also felt it would cheer up the wreath with these pretty blue flowers everywhere. So now we're on to the phase of the painting where we want our flowers to really stand out from the background. This involves going in with more concentrated paint pigments to get that more intense pop of colour where you need it. So we've added a deeper blue green on the stalks of the grape hyacinths. And then we're adding little blobs of blue and purple all over those flowers just to suggest the texture of the grape hyacinths. I don't want to go into too much detail because it is an impression of the grape hyacinths, not a botanical, but it really does the trick. Now we're going to add white to the daffodils and primroses to boost the brightness. It's the paint equivalent of increasing your brightness and concentration when you're editing your photos on photo apps. In contrast, for the darks, I mix a dark blue-green-grey for the soil and base of the teacup. Now I'm using the Burnt Sienna, that gorgeous ready brown, to intensify the terracotta pot and the hyacinth bulbs. Now I'm going to concentrate on the primrose flowers sitting on the decorative bit of bark. Just mixing some white with the pink to add to the flowers. That'll really make them stand out against the terracotta pot in the background. Now I'm adding some dark wavy lines to represent the bark sitting underneath the flowers. I continue to use the dark blue green mix to define and paint the negative spaces in the painting to really make the different elements pop out off the page. And I really feel that the spread is really coming together now. We're now heading towards those finishing touches, which are always my favourite part. Here I'm mixing a brighter shade of yellow for the eggs and for the calendar and the lettering. And then possibly my favourite bit, which is the opaque cobalt paint with the white to paint all the forget-me-nots around the wreath. I just feel they really complete the page and they really remind me of my mum. They're just so bright and cheerful. I'll be honest with you, I never thought I could paint like this in a bullet journal, but I'm thrilled with how the paper has held up. Now it's time to add those finishing touches that I do with the fine liner pens. They really bring the crocuses into sharp focus. And because they are water soluble to a certain extent, you can still use your little brush with a touch of water to soften the edges where you feel you need to. I'm just completing my calendar with the fine liner pen now. And then I use my special dark blue grey mix to add the darkest tones to the piece, such as the speckles on the egg and the shadows of the wreath itself. I hope you love this spread as much as I do. I'm thinking about turning this into an art print or a postcard. Uh, I love it that much. I'm just adding my little snail in the foreground now. And outlining my March lettering. So this is the finished spread. Bit of an epic one, I know. But I hope you can take some elements from it. That'll inspire you. So now we're on to my spring plant pot spread. My bullet journal habit tracker page is really not one of my favourite ones. So I really wanted to cheer it up with these adorable little plant pots. I use my 2H pencil, which is easy to erase and essentially draw four box like shapes with rounded edges. The crocus flower heads are like ice cream cones. 
I keep the drawing simple for each of the spring pots. The hyacinth flowers are those little pyramid shapes. And then it's a ball for the big hyacinth bulb. And then little trumpet flower heads for the daffodils. Each pot is wrapped in string with a cute little label. Each one has a different shape. So they're sitting on the base of my goal setting page. And now this is my habit tracker page. I arranged the boxes of trackers around the periphery and I'm drawing a larger pot of white grape hyacinths sitting next to a little nest of bird's eggs. So now it's time to paint the pots. I used the similar colours that I did for my cover page, a lemon yellow for the daffodils with green for the stems. I apologise again for my head getting in the way on occasion. <laughs> and yeah, I'm using the watered down violet paint and little dots of cobalt blue for the blue hyacinths. And then I will use a mix of burnt sienna and burnt umber brown for the ball shape of the hyacinth spring bulb. For the actual flower pots, I add white to the brown mix that I already had to create this gorgeous coffee colour. If you're enjoying this video, I really hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I will continue to add bullet journal related videos at least once a week, hopefully on a Thursday, and try to make sure that I link all the chapters in the video description to make it easy for you to find the relevant bits that you're interested in. So I'm using the fine liner pens to outline everything. And these turned out so well, I've decided to turn these into my very first bullet journal sticker sheet that I'll hopefully get in the shop as soon as I can. Once they're ready, I'll let you know on this channel. Of course, you can always find us on Etsy, Instagram and Facebook if you're interested in following my work. So as you saw, I lay in a very watery wash of greens and blues and browns as my first layer. To tie the whole spread together, I've used the beautiful blue-grey mix that I make out of the burnt umber and French ultramarine to go between the pots and use a large square brush to go over the complete two page spread. After drying, I use my fine liner pens and a brush pen to put some nice focal points and strong pops of color into the plant pot. All my supplies that I'm using today are linked below and if you want a more in-depth look at how I paint the backgrounds of all my pages, then uh, do have a look at the linked video above in my February Plan With Me video, where I take you through the process. I use this beautiful blue-gray mix to paint all the headers on this spread as well. Now it's time to focus on the eggs and the little nest again. Um, I use a similar technique that I use with the willow wreath where I use some brown and basically do wavy lines going round in the circle to suggest the twigs. I use a mix of ready brown and dark brown and then you'll see me use white more opaque paint for the highlights of the twigs where it would catch the light. Here I'm just adding a little garden ornament in the shape of a heart. Uh, that really is a nod to my mum because she loves hanging good garden ornaments. So now I'm going to use my fine liner pen to add my planner goals for March and my habit tracker titles. 
For a final touch, I added more forget-me-nots with opaque paint and then used my white gel pen for the finishing touches on the white grape hyacinths. I absolutely love the way this spread turned out and I hope you do too. And now we're on to the final spread that I'm showing you in the video today. A large teacup full of violet crocuses. I drew this in much the same way I did the one on the cover page, I just did it a little larger. I wanted more of a focus on the crocuses this time. So here I am with the purple watery paint again. But this time you're going to see beautiful variegated petals where I add opaque white to all the edges of the petals. This is the exact kind that my mum had last year. I'm using a nice blue-green paint for the leaves and I add a few blue-green splatters as well. This is the yellow-green that I use for the moss and just to give a bit of a variety in tone. Then I'll use a deeper darker green having mixed it with blue to do some negative space painting to show more definition to the contents of the teacup. These stalks are like miniature cotton plant stalks with the little white buds of cotton, the kind you see in florists. I wanted a lovely teal colour for this teacup and a spray of beautiful little white flowers surrounding the base of the crocuses. I felt this little floral arrangement was so beautiful it deserved to be a sticker as well so I don't know what size I'm going to do it. I might do a 5 by 5 centimeter one, I'm not sure, but it will become a sticker. So make sure you look out for it. So I mixed the yellow green and the blue green together, added white and got this beautiful sage green in my colouring palette which I use for the base and the background and then I added a bit of cobalt blue and white to add a blue pastel colour also to the background then added some splashes for a bit of fun so after the washes of the background make sure you get the hair dryer and really dry it thoroughly then you're able to add your final finishing touches with your white gel pen and your fine liner pens. My final touch is a bit of lilac for the headers and for the base of the cup. And I add a bit of purple highlighter to that as well. And here is the finished spread. Doesn't it look gorgeous? I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe or comment. And hopefully I'll see you back here again next week to do the magnolia tree spread. Bye for now.